Hi, this is Brian with Profitless Medium Post. Today we're going to talk about a couple different methods of 3D object tracking in DaVinci Resolve Fusion using the camera tracker. If you are familiar with Fusion and Resolve, I'll put a link up above and in the description for a fast overview video. Sometimes we need to add in 3D elements tracked onto moving objects in 3D space. For example, adding in 3D text or particle systems. Although Fusion is limited to what we can do with 3D object tracking, we do have a couple options without having to use dedicated tracking software like PF Track and Synthize. In this shot, we're going to add some 3D text to the side of the bike. The first method we are going to use is to track the bike as a static object with the camera moving around it, which depending on your shot might be all you need. Then we're going to do the opposite, having a static camera with an animated point cloud. And if you'd like to follow along, I'll put a link to this video clip in the description below. So here we are in Fusion, and here's our clip. We have a motorcycle going across the screen. So what we're looking to do is object track that motorcycle. I've already set up a mask for just the motorcycle, so let's add in a camera tracker. And we'll just add it in here. We're going to take our mask and drop it inside the camera tracker. So since this is stock footage, we don't have any information about the camera. So we're just going to hit auto track. And you can see that it's tracking just the bike. And after we're done with that, let's go over to the solve and hit solve. Okay, and we have a error of 0.84, which isn't too horrible, and a focal length of 6.93. The focal length is actually going to be pretty important with object tracking, as it is with any 3D tracking, really. Say we wanted to add like a rocket on the back of this and make it match up perfectly with this bike, uh, then you need the right focal length for it to even match up correctly. Uh, so the focal length will be important as far as the shape goes. For our case here, it's not going to be, it doesn't need to be perfect, but we also don't want it to be too far off. So with that said, let's first start cleaning up some of these trackers. Go down to the maximum solve error. Bring this down to like one. Let's select those trackers and delete them. And then hit solve. Now we have an error of 0.4 with a focal length of 56. Let's take a look at what this is looking like now. So I'm going to grab a merge 3D. The second output of the camera tracker, let's drop it into the Merge 3D. And what that's going to do is let us take a look at what our solve is looking like so far. Okay, so this point cloud right here does not represent the bike at all. It looks a little too spread out. Uh, so we're going to have to change the focal length for sure. So one of the things we can do is we can go into the solve options and let's turn off refine focal length and then let's just plug in a manual number. Let's plug in something like 15. Let's solve that. Okay, 15 is starting to, uh, 15 millimeter looks a little bit closer. I might even want to go a little bit smaller than that. Let's bring this down to 11. See what that looks like. Okay, that's looking better. One of the things I'm looking at here is right here. There's this like a little bit of a curve. Uh, and that's what you do with 3D tracking, really, is, is looking for like little clues that you can use, especially when you don't have any information. Okay, so we have an error of 0.46. That's pretty good. Let's go into the merge scene. And let's look through the camera. Now we can see our point cloud in action. So here we have our animated camera, and this is actually static. Points are static and the camera is moving around it, but so you can see how useful this could be in certain situations. It looks like we have a straggler point here we can delete. Just take care of that real quick and solve. Okay, that's a little bit better. But we have our ground plane is way up here. We have a couple different options. We don't have any points on the ground plane. But what we can do is we could just maybe grab this point and we'll bring the ground plane lower anyway. And we can we can eyeball it. We can adjust the ground plane with our 3D scene if we need to. But for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, and since we're just adding in 3D text, it's not really that necessary. But let's take a look at what we can do. So let's go to our 3D scene transform. Under align, let's go to unaligned. And we're going to set this point as our origin. And if we go back to aligned, you can see now we have our ground plane a little bit lower. 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. Another thing we can do is let's go back to unaligned. And we can just take the Y position and just push this down a little bit. So, whoops, not that much. Somewhere around there. And uh, we click on aligned. And there we go. Okay, so the ground plane looks a little bit better. Uh, so now we're ready to export. Let's export that. And now let's take a look at our scene. So now we have our camera moving around our static object. Uh, I don't think we need the ground plane for this really. Let me add in some 3D text and a light just so we can kind of see how this all works. So I'm just going to speed this up real quick. Yeah, so something like that. So I have this um, 3D text that looks like it's probably about there. Uh, we can line this up a little bit better by looking through our 3D scene. So inside the Merge 3D, let's right click, Camera, Camera 3D. Okay, and we can kind of see what's going on. So that's one method we can use to add in 3D text. Um, and that's looking pretty good. And if we wanted to, we can get into putting a ground plane down here and putting the shadows. The other method that we're going to take a look at is how we can get this point cloud animated. And that can be really important, especially if you're going to use like particle systems or something like that, which you need to follow the object. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So we're going to go back into our camera tracker. In the export, let's go down to export options. And now in export options, there's an option down here, animation. We have animated camera, and that's normally what we use, but we do have this animate point cloud. Let's click on that. Now this is going to, going to give us a point cloud that's got the animation in it. So I'm going to turn off, first of all, I'm going to turn off ground plane and image plane. I don't really need those. One of the things that I found out when doing this is that you actually need to leave for it to work is to leave on aligned initially and export it and then update the export with unaligned. I know it sounds strange, but that's the only way I was able to get this to work. With that switch to animated point cloud, let's hit export and let's look at this scene. And you can see right away there's a problem. We have our camera here, but our point cloud is way off in outer space. So that's not going to work. But we do have our point cloud animation. If we look at it from the side, you can see we have an animated point cloud. It looks like it's probably going to line up OK. Now to fix that, we just go into the camera tracker. And if we click Unaligned and then Update Previous Export. Now we're seeing it double up. I think that's a problem with the beta. Let me just If you just click inside the nodes, it seems to get rid of it. So now you can see our point cloud is in front of our static camera, and we do have motion. And so let's take our text and uh, spotlight. I'm going to copy that and paste it here. Now to add things to this scene, the point cloud itself is, the, is where the animation is. So if we take the point cloud go into the transform, you can see all the animation is in here. So we need to either copy that animation into, into one of these, or you can just push these into the point cloud. So I'm going to grab a 3D merge. I'm going to merge the spotlight and the text together, and I'm going to add that to our point cloud. So now our spotlight and our text are going to move with the point cloud. So I just need to reposition them. So hold on one second while I get this together. And so now you can see that our spotlight and our text are moving along with our point cloud. So let's take a look at how this looks inside the, this is our renderer. I'm just going to switch the render type to software and turn on lighting so you can kind of see what's going on. And now you can see we have our 3D text following along with the motorcycle. Of course, we're going to have to adjust the lighting and everything like that. But you have a 3D scene that you can add your 3D objects into uh, and to match up with the motion of your object. So there's a couple different options for object tracking with inside DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you again in the next one.